Have you ever had a CT scan and wondered how much radiation you received? It's a complicated question, but here's a rough way to get you into the right ballpark. The first thing you want to do is find a number on your CT scan report called the Dose Length Product, or DLP. If it isn't written in your radiology report, you might have to go to the radiation dose sheet on your actual images to figure it out, which means you'll need to request a copy of the CT scan from medical records and pop in the USB drive or CD they gave you to view the images. What you're looking for will look something like this, and you're trying to find this number here, the DLP. That number represents something called the absorbed dose, and it measures how much energy from radiation is taken in by a specific part of the body. But the problem with this number is that it lacks context. For example, you can't compare the absorbed dose of one study to a different study. Like you can't compare the absorbed dose of a chest X-ray to a head CT, it wouldn't make sense. You also can't compare to other types of radiation, like what you would get from natural sources, such as radon or cosmic radiation from outer space. The reason is that each body part has different organs, and those organs have different sensitivities to radiation. So what we need to do is convert the absorbed dose to something called the effective dose, which takes into account the body region being scanned. To do this, we take the DLP number, and multiply it by a conversion, which is different based on which body part is being scanned. To get that conversion factor, we have to consult a table like this one. So for example, in our case, I'm gonna multiply it by the conversion factor of 0.014, because this was an adult patient and it was a chest CT. So the result comes out to about five, and the units are millisieverts. That's the effective dose. It's important to mention here that this number, the effective dose, is still pretty crude and that your age, sex, and body size are also important components of quantifying dose. But this number does get you into the right ballpark. If you can't find the DLP number from your study, then here are some typical numbers for effective dose for CTs of various body parts. These numbers are not gonna be as good as calculating it yourself, so they could be drastically different based on the protocol that was used, the scanner that was used, your body type, and other factors. So now that you have this number, the effective dose, let's give it some context. This pie chart shows how much radiation the average person in the United States gets. What you'll notice is that the amount of radiation we receive from natural sources is about three millisieverts. That means just going about your daily life without getting any radiology studies, you're gonna get on average about three millisieverts per year. In some places, you might get more natural radiation. For example, if you live in an area of the country where there's more naturally occurring radon, then your number would be higher. Also, if you live at a higher altitude or if you just take a lot of plane trips, you're gonna get more cosmic radiation, which comes in from space. Just as an example, if you go from New York to LA on a plane, you'll get about 0.035 millisieverts of radiation, which is about a third of a chest X-ray. But the average person in the United States is gonna get about three millisieverts per year. Now, the next question most people have is, am I going to get cancer from this CT scan that I had? And the difficulty with answering that question is that you're attempting to measure an outcome based on a really tiny effect. And one analogy would be, let's say you're in a field and 50 feet away from you is a leaf and you have to measure how much this leaf will move by you blowing on it from 50 feet away. And by the way, the wind is also blowing. So you have to determine how much more the leaf moved by you blowing on it. And the answer is, I'm not sure that you blowing on it is making any difference on the leaf, but if it is, the effect is so small that we can't accurately measure it. And the same is true for a CT scan. At the levels of radiation that you get from a CT, we don't really know if those levels cause cancer down the line. But just for the sake of argument, let's just assume that they do. The effect would be so small that we can't accurately measure it, especially given the fact that the lifetime risk of getting any cancer is already around 40%. Here's a graph showing the effective dose on the x-axis and the lower limits where we know that there's an increased risk of cancer. Below about 100 millisieverts, the risk is too low to be convincingly demonstrated or does not exist. 
above around 100 to 150 millisieverts, scientists have been able to detect a slight uptick in the number of cancers. The problem is for any one person, most of the time there's no way to tell what exactly caused the cancer because the thing that caused the cancer usually is something that happened years back. Now you might say, well, last year I had a lot of health problems and got 10 CTs and that adds up to 100 millisieverts. Well, you can't just add up the numbers and say you have the same risk as someone who got like 100 millisieverts all at once. What we know about radiation is that the cancer risk is higher if you get it all at once. Like a lot of this data was obtained from atomic bomb survivors who got one huge dose of radiation. Finally, let's think about the other side of the equation, which is the reason why the test was ordered in the first place. For most cases, you have on one hand a well-defined benefit of doing the CT, like you're trying to make a diagnosis, or you're trying to determine if something is getting bigger or smaller, or it's needed for planning for surgery or an interventional radiology procedure. Now, on the other hand, you have this zero to slightly greater than zero increased chance of a cancer sometime down the line. Most of the time, it's pretty clear where the benefit lies. Now, despite all of that and the fact that we think CT scans are safe, we still take precautions. In radiology, we operate under the principle of ALARA, which stands for as low as reasonably achievable. This means that we optimize our protocols to use the lowest dose possible that's needed to answer the question that's being asked. And today, CT scanners, x-ray equipment, fluoroscopy equipment, all come with multiple dose-saving technologies so that the radiation dose we're able to get by with today are much less than what was done 10 to 20 years ago. We also operate using a set of guidelines, we call them appropriateness criteria, that help radiologists and other doctors determine whether a study is appropriate to do in the first place. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to allay some of your concerns about radiation, and I hope I've provided some context for you. If you have any questions about your own specific situation, I would encourage you to reach out to your own health professional. But if you have a general question about this topic, let me know in the comments below. Thanks.